Hello, thank you for checking out my YouTube channel today. In today's video, I want to talk about my ISA-based USB card here. Now, for those of you who followed my channel for the last couple of years, you know that my motherboard project uses a USB module for the hard drive, and this plugs into the side of the uh, motherboard. What I've done is I've basically moved it to a card. Uh, if you look, it's probably even mapped out the same, even the resistors, I just copied it over. Um, I do have to uh, decode for it on the card um, because you're not going to get, all you get is your address and data on your ISA bus. So you've got basically on this card, you got five uh, 138 uh, decoders for both the uh, USB controller and the uh, ROM extension. So I've got a, a ROM extension and this one is a, it's a 32K chip but I'm only mapped out for 8K of it, and it's the bottom 8K of the chip. So if your code is bigger than 8K, it, it's not gonna work on this board. Um, what I've done though, is I put some jumpers on here, and you probably won't be able to see that in the camera very well, but you can select where it sits in uh, memory, the ROM extension that is, with these jumpers. So uh, E, zero 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 or d zero 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 and then this selects basically 8k segments between that so you you can go from d followed by four zeros all the way to ee -E, followed by three zeros in 8k segments all the way up and that way it doesn't conflict with any of your uh, existing rom extensions if you had any Something else, uh, I only decoded uh, the bottom address lines for the I.O. address 0 through 3 are not decoded for the uh, controller. And if you see there's space here, I could actually decode those down, put a jumper, and then you could have the base address of the, of the host here at different locations. And then you could put two of these in your machine, obviously with the code corresponding to each one. But uh, anyway... It's just real basic, and it just drops right in. You don't need any drivers. It uh, runs at the BIOS level. So I'm going to demo it, and the first demo I'm going to do, because this is kind of meant to be universal, is I have got a PC-104 here, and this one I want to say is a Pentium, maybe a Pentium 2. I got this recently, and what I did was I created a... ISA header here and USB-C for power and we'll just plug the card into one of these. Um, I can't remember if I labeled the bracket in or not. Actually, I think, anyway, if I didn't, I probably should put an arrow on there. And we'll plug in our drive and let's boot this thing up. Um, it was being a little uh, finicky. I'm going to put that so you can see the, the drive initialized. Let me hit escape on the memory. Let's pull this in. So you can see this is the code from uh, HackFu's uh, GitLab page. Um, the standalone version, I just downloaded it. This one might not be the most recent version, but it's at least in the last month or so. You can see it's working on the drive. And it's starting MS-DOS now. It's a little blurry, but you get the point is that it is now booting on this machine with the drop-in card. I did uh, have to play with the BIOS settings a little. I finally just hit them, set them to default and it started working. Uh, before that, it wasn't working. Uh, another demo I'm going to do here, uh, see the keyboard does work, it type. So the other demo I'm going to do is this 286 here. You get a toggle switch for this. Should function about the same. And, yep, 
lights flashing. Start again as DOS. Um, now I tried this on a 486 and probably the same thing. I need to just set the BIOS to default. It, I think it runs about the same BIOS as actually this one here. Um, but I haven't been able to get a boot on a 46 and then I've tried it on my IBM PC 5150 and it was struggling there. I started to wonder if the port address is off. Uh, maybe it's conflicting with something, but as you can see, it works with these two PCs and then, uh, really not necessary to do a demo, but it obviously works with my homemade PC here. This one's a V20. This is my latest motherboard with the, uh, DMA built onto the board, but it works on that board as well. So if I can get it to develop a little nicer, keep it cleaner, get it to work in more PCs, I'll probably get them listed if anybody wants one. Something else, another little note. Uh, this is the bracket that goes on there. It's a Keystone 9202. Um, need to get a sheet metal punch or mill and uh, cut out a slot and then hopefully we'll put that as the uh, faceplate for the card. So anyway, uh, thanks for checking out my video today.